Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I have something really fun to show you. And this comes from a project that I was working on earlier this year. We wanted to conduct focus groups with some students, but because of the pandemic, everybody's remote. And so we decided to do these focus groups asynchronously on the Canvas platform. Now this isn't the first time that we've done asynchronous focus groups in Canvas, but in the past, our homepage looked different. And this time around, I wanted to try a new approach. So we have these elements, introductions, and each day we would unveil a topic for the class, and then the students can click on the button and go to that topic for that class. In the past, we did this with a table, and we would put an image, but it's really not a good practice to use tables for things like this. And so I wanted to create these elements. These are HTML, CSS elements, and you can tell that these are HTML because if I highlight some text, then you can see that I'm grabbing the, the sections here. And I didn't want to just have a picture of the card. I wanted it to be interactive. So you notice as I hover over these buttons, then they interact with my cursor. And these are all clickable. I can click them, except for these that say coming soon. If I click on those, then nothing happens because they're not active yet. And the gist was each day I would activate one of these cards and it would take the students to a focus group discussion thread and they could participate for that day. So I want to show you the behind the scenes, how I created these cards, what code did I use, and also the different elements. So I have different headers, I have pictures, I have a hyperlink button that I created. And let's walk through all of these elements and what you can do to put something similar in your Canvas course. Before we get into the code, I just want to say if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would definitely appreciate it if you did. And you can also follow social media, look for How to Canvas on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course YouTube. And look for new content Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time on howtocanvas.com and here on YouTube. So let's dive into the code. Now this code is going to be available on my website, howtocanvas.com. So click over there and you can just copy it into a file and you'll want to upload it to your theme editor. Or work with somebody at your institution who has access to your Canvas theme editor. So these first three elements, you can copy and paste these as is and that would be different classes. One I called card page and you can call these classes whatever you want. I have card body and then I have card container and I have various properties and you can change some of these. For example, the minimum height, I have 450 pixels. It looks bigger over here because I'm zoomed in 200%. I have elements such as box sizing and I have alignments and justifications. And for the most part, you'll probably want to keep these properties as is, but you can feel free to tinker with them. I would definitely do that in a beta or test instance of Canvas and not in the live instance. I also have a class called card and then I have all of these other classes within the card. So the card is a width of 300 pixels and that would be from the edge left to the edge right. And each of these cards have this card class. I put in a background color, which is what you see right here. That's this bluish gray in the background. You can change that to whatever color you want. I also put in some padding and some margins. The padding is referring to the space between the edge of the element and the content that's inside the element. And then the margin would be the edge of the element to the outside areas. So I just wanted a little bit of space. I don't want anything to run up to the edge. Put a border radius, and then you'll see the box shadow right here. I actually have two shadows for this element. The most important one is this first one, which is saying that the shadow is going off on the x-axis by five pixels, and then it's going down on the y-axis also by five pixels. And then it has a little bit of a spread, a 10 pixel spread. And then I put in the color, and I put a little bit of transparency, 0.8 transparency. Now I have another shadow as well. We can't see it because this is white, but there is a white shadow on the upper left-hand portion of this element, and it's a transparency of 0.5. If the background was a different color, then you'd be able to see the shadow, but since I just have a white background, then it's not showing up. But it does give an interesting effect if you have a colored background. Some of these other elements that we're looking at is I have an H4, and this is my H4 right here. I have some padding, I have it transformed to uppercase, and you can determine which properties you want. I would definitely recommend that you center align it, but other than that, you can choose your own properties. You can put in a color, you can put in whatever text transform you want. And then I have an H5, which is down here, and this is a slightly different color. You can see that I added the color. I also have that center and bold. I put in different line spacing, different font size. And then the paragraph is referring to the button down below and the properties for that text. Now, very important to me are these next two items, which is the anchor 
anchor meaning a hyperlink and so this bottom portion is actually a hyperlink and I drew in some elements to the hyperlink so I put in some padding I put text decoration none that means usually a hyperlink is blue text with a blue underline and then after you click on it it changes to purple I didn't want any of that I wanted to determine the color of the font for example this color right here and I didn't want it to be ornamental at all but one thing that was important to me is the box shadow and so this shadow is saying that there's a shadow that's off to the right it's a little bit smaller than the main card shadow it's only three pixels to the right three pixels down and then a blur of 10 with a little bit of transparency and then I have this second shadow because you can have more than one drop shadow on an element and so this one goes up and left by five pixels and then I put a bit of distance and a little bit of blur and I made it white and so that gives it this white shadow right here and this gives it an effect that's called new morphism that's new as an n-e-u morphism and so it gives it this impression that it's standing off of the page a little bit that it has not texture but it has contour it has presence and then important this last element over here is the anchor when the mouse is hovering over it then I actually change the shadow properties. And so you can see that effect. As I hover over the anchor right here, then instead of having outside shadows, there's an inset shadow. So I have a dark one, and then I have a light one right here. And then you can see this is the dark, and this right here is the light. And I changed the transparencies from the previous shadows as well. And you can play around with those properties if you want. You can make the shadows bigger or smaller or you can just copy my code and have the button look exactly this way. But I really like this effect. And these are all active, and so if the students click on them, then they'll be taken to a different page on Canvas, except for these that say coming soon. If I click on this, then it's not active. But day by day, I would be changing the code and making these active. So that's an overview of the buttons that we're looking at. Now let's go ahead and edit the text and take a look at this code. Okay, so here's our page. This first part we can ignore. That's just boilerplate. It's just text that I put on the page. And the second part is really the part that we'll focus on that has the cards. And so first of all, I have three divs. One div has the class of card page, and I can't combine classes. These have to be three separate divs. And I also put some style. I put a little bit of margin, a 50 pixel margin, so that there'd be some space between the text above and the cards, and that's optional for you. You want a second div that's called card body, and then a third div which is called card container. And all of your cards are going to fit right within these three classes. So you need to copy and paste this as is and put it right onto your canvas page. And then of course at the bottom you're going to close out those divs. And so all of this other content that's in between there are the individual cards. So the first card, we have another div. This time I have a class of card. And again, I'm going to put card page, that class in there. So two different classes within this div, and that would be one card. And the rest of it's just HTML elements. And so I have an H4, and that's my title of the card. And then I'll have an H5. I really recommend not using too many words for this particular interaction because it looks cleaner if it's just something very simple, such as module one, module two, or unit one, unit two. I have an image, and so you can upload your own images into Canvas. I used images that are 200 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall, or approximately there. And so you want something pretty small. And lastly here, I have my anchor. My anchor is called participate, and then I think the rest of them are coming soon, or I have one that's called click here. But let's look at this anchor tag. So I have the anchor, I have the style, text, decoration, none, which I already had before, but I guess I just put it a second time. And then I have the color of the text. Now any color that you put here is going to override the color that you put right here. Now it happens to be, it looks like it's the same color, but you could put a different color if you wanted to, which I do later on. So I have a title for my anchor, and then I have the href. And so you can take that href, just put in the hyperlink to whatever canvas page you want to go to, and then you're set. You close your div out. This is a fully functioning card. Once you have this created, you can copy and paste it and however many cards you want, and then you're set. So let's hop over to day three and four, those topics. So I have an image, and if you recall, my images are as such. So for the introduction, I have a name tag, 
And then as the days become unlocked, then I have an image for that. So it's a blue background with a lock. And then on the locked days, then it's red with, and the lock is closed. Let's hop over to day three. I have my H4, my H5, and then I have an image. On that day when I need to unlock that, then I would just replace the image. And really all I would do is take one of the previous images and I would just copy that code and delete this code and I would paste it in there. So the anchor right now is inactive. It is active in that it has all of the properties from the CSS that I called in. And so within this div, the div is class card. And because I said every anchor within the card class is going to espouse these properties. And so it has a shadow and everything. It just doesn't have an active hyperlink. And the active hyperlink would be an href. And so I have the anchor here in order to activate that I would just put an href and put in the URL. Where do I want the students to go when they click on this button? It could be a discussion page, it could be an assignment, it could be a module, it could be anywhere within the Canvas course. And I have the words coming soon colored differently because right here I have the style, color, and I put that as a gray. And so when it's active, I would just change the words coming soon to maybe participate or whatever you want. And then I'd go ahead and delete this code right here that's coloring it a different color. And then it'll take up the same color as the other buttons here. Now, one thing I like about this code is that it's responsive. And that if I were to change the width to something a little bit more narrow, instead of three columns with two rows, it would divide it into two columns with three rows. And if I make this even smaller, for example, on a mobile screen, then it would conform and it would stack one on top of each other. And so it looks good regardless of the screen size. And to me, that's really important because I think the aesthetics is the whole reason why I'm making this interaction. So again, grab my code. You can find it at the link below on howtocanvas.com. You'll need to upload some of that CSS into your instance theme editor or work with somebody who has access to that theme editor. And the rest of it is just HTML. So again, play around in your sandbox, change the properties, make it your own, try and break it, try and fix it. It's a really fun little interaction, and I think that it'll be engaging for your students. It'll be something interesting to add to your course. Again, don't forget to subscribe, especially as we're getting into a new school year. You want to get all of my tips and tricks. And happy teaching and learning.